doesn't even mean Bowers Game Corner. Oi there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Charged by BoardGameExchange.com, the internet's only board game rental website. And today I am extremely excited because I will be reviewing Twilight Struggle from GMT Games. This is for two players. It is for ages 12 and up, and it will take you wowzers three hours to play this bad boy. And you're saying, you're saying, why would I possibly want to play a three hour game? I'll tell you why. Because on BoardGameGeek.com, this is the number one game. The best game. There are thousands of other games out there, and they're saying, hey, this two player three hour game is the number one game. Period. So, in Twilight Struggle, what are you going to be doing? You'll be playing as either the USA or the USSR during the Cold War, trying to crush your opponent by gaining influence all over the world, by winning the space race, by trying to outsmart, outplay your opponent with various different cards and maneuvers. You'll be doing a lot of different things over your three hours when you're playing this game. Now, as I mentioned, this is from BoardGameExchange.com. So I don't actually have a box to show you because in order to save the consumer a little bit of money, they don't ship the box. They just ship all the components you'll need to play the game. However, the box is about a foot long by nine inches. It's about two inches deep. So it's not a huge box by any stretch of the imagination. Is it going to be worth the room on your shelf that you're going to give it? I don't know. Let's find out. All right. Twilight Struggle. There's going to be a lot in here. I can't go over the entire game, unfortunately, because this would be a 45-minute video. However, I am going to try to hammer on a couple of the points. But first, let's go in what you're going to get. And I'm just going to go real briefly over what you're going to get inside of it. First, you're going to get your rule booklet. It is 32 pages, full color, front and back printing. You're saying, wow, that's really daunting. But pages 20 to 32 are actually just uh, kind of history stuff about uh, what all the different cards mean because all the different cards are actual events that happen. Other than that, this is a fantastic rule booklet. This is exactly how this rule booklet should have been written because if it were written any worse, no one would play the game because they'd be too confused. They knock this out of the park. Hats off to GMT Games. It is a fantastic rule booklet. Next, you're also going to get two player aid cards. These will uh, tell you, or help you with various things you'll be doing throughout the game, such as coup and realignments, trying to uh, take over different parts of the world. And on the back, it has a list of the cards that you're going to get. You're also going to get chips. These, this bag of chips, will be spread throughout the world, and they will symbolize different things on the different parts of the game board, which I'm going to go into in a little bit. But you're going to get a lot of these chips because, as you can see, this is a very large game board. Next, you're going to get chips. You're going to get blue chips and you're going to get red chips. They will have different numbers on them and they will have uh, different colors on them. If you have, see the blue, that means that you have successful influence over a country. If you see the white, that means you're trying to gain influence over a country. But that doesn't really mean much to you now. I'll show you that in a couple minutes. But you get blue and red, you're going to get a whole bunch of those. And this is one of those games where if the board gets shaken up, bad things will happen. So you need to be very careful with these chips because they will be all over the board. The last thing you're going to get are dice. You're going to get a blue one and a red one, symbolizing, obviously, the USA and the USSR. The last thing you're going to get are cards. This is a card-driven game. Uh, at its heart, this is really just a get eight cards or nine cards and play those cards. You're just going to pick them up and play them. However, it gets really complex. But you're going to get early war cards, you're going to get mid-war cards, and you're going to get late war cards, which will be shuffled into the deck as you progress through the game. So, let's just look at one sample card. This is a U.S. card. You can tell that because it has a white star. Uh, the USSR cards have a red star on them. And some of them have half white and half red. That means it can go either way which side it benefits. So this one is the Marshall Plan. Allows play of NATO. Add one U.S. influence in each of seven non-USSR controlled Western European countries. And you're like, wow, that sounds really complex. Trust me, it's not that complex. Essentially, that just means you're going to get to play some of your influence up here and then set this card to the side. Now, uh, let's go over the board real quick. Because the board, there's a lot of stuff going on on the board and you can easily lose track of everything on the board because you need to be balancing what's happening over here and what's happening over here and there and there and there and every single spot on the board is really important to you, which is just crazy. So first we got the action round track. 
There are 10 turns in this game, and you're going to have a certain number of actions per turn. This is just nice to help keep track of that. Down here we have the death con status. If it's at 5, you have peace. If it's at 1, there's nuclear war and the game is over. Whoever causes nuclear war loses. In between, there's various things that you can't do. So if you're at 3, there's no attacks allowed in Asia. If you're at 2, there's no attacks allowed in Asia or in Europe or in the Middle East. Uh, down here we have required military operations. Because in a war, you're going to have to get your hands a little bit dirty. So uh, you, you keep track of this, and whoever does the most required oper or military operations in a turn is going to gain a couple extra victory points at the end of that said turn. Uh, last, up in the corner, we have the space race track and the turn record track. The turn record track is just help here to help you keep track of what state of the game you're in. So this is early war. That means you get six action rounds instead of seven, which you get at the mid-war. And then you also add the mid-war cards. This is very nice because it keeps you remembering exactly what stage of the game you are in. The last thing we're going to look at here is the space race track. Because, as you know, in the Cold War, uh, getting into space was very important for them for some peculiar reason. But um, this can help gain you some points and also help gain you some special abilities, which I really like to use. Uh, when I play this, I really try and double down on the space race track because you can gain special abilities as long as your opponent hasn't gotten that far in the space race. So, for instance, if you get to the second space, you have gotten an animal into space. You may play two space race cards per turn instead of one. Normally, you can only play one space race card. With this, you can now play two, which will help you move along the track. If you get to the very end, you may take eight action rounds, which is extremely useful, and you also gain two victory points, which will be very, very important. Last thing I haven't mentioned is the victory point track, which is one of my favorite mechanics of this game. Normally, you need to get to 15 points to win a game or something like that. However, in this game, you need to get to 20 points and your opponent needs to get to 20 points, but you're going to be fighting for points. If you gain three points, your opponent gains three points, you guys are back to zero. It's a very interesting mechanic I like an awful lot. So, how do we start the game? I'll go over that real quick. Start the game, you're going to get eight cards. The first thing you're going to do is you and your opponent are going to take a look at your cards, which can take a very long time because there's a lot to read. You're going to have what's called the headline phase. This means you're both going to play one card. And then you're going to uh, decide who gets to go first. That's based on which number is higher. So if this guy had a four and he had a three, then this action would take place first. If there's a tie, the, the advantage goes to the U.S. of A. Then you're going to kill, take turns going back and forth, laying cards that will that will completely change how the game board looks based on influence. Now, I've mentioned influence a couple times. What is the influence? In order to win this game, you are going to need to control countries and continents for scoring cards. I know, this is a lot, but let's go over the scoring card real quick. You're going to need to balance out where you're playing your influence. Because it's nice if you have control of Asia. If you have complete control of Asia, that's great. But the bottom line is, if someone has one, one thing controlled over in South America, and the South America scoring card comes up, they get a lot of points for South America. So you are going to have to make sure you diversify your portfolio and spread throughout the board. The last thing I want to go into is how you gain control of the countries. So let's look at Israel, for instance. So Israel... Uh, I forgot to mention, at the beginning of the game, you're going to be able to set out some influence just from the get-go. So normally, you know, you would you get to set out like 10 wherever you want, and then like there'll be numbers here. So in Israel, America already has one influence, whereas in Iraq, the USSR already has one influence, and you would have your chip there. So in Israel, there's a 4 by that. That means their stability is 4. That means in order to turn them over to your side, pro-USA or pro-USSR, you are going to need to have four influence in there while your opponent has zero. However, if you have four and your opponent has one, you're going to need five. If your opponent has two, you're going to need six. Uh, so you're going to need at least four more than your opponent to control that country. Now here's the thing though. You're like, okay, but that's that's really not that hard to get four there. Why, you know, I imagine these things are just constantly in flux. But here's the thing you gotta remember. In order to lay down here, normally you would normally lay one operations point to get one influence in Israel. However, if someone else has control of that, if your opponent has control of Israel, then you have to lay two operations points to lay down one influence. So it's really a race to try and gain control 
over a lot of different countries. Overall, what you're pretty much trying to do is rule the world by gaining influence over all the different countries scattered throughout all the different continents. That's Twilight Struggle. All right, Twilight Struggle from GMT Games, the number one game on BoardGameGeek.com. Does it earn that ranking? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. On the con side, this game will not be for everyone. It's just not. Some people are not going to want to play a three-hour game. Some people are not going to want an exclusively two-player game. Some people are not going to want to go, to want to go through a 32-page rule booklet to figure out how to play the game. Some people are not going to want to play the kind of game where it's just you trying to crush your opponent. There's no cooperative element. There's no, uh, you can just do this with being nice to each other. You have to crush your opponent. For instance, my fiancé hates this game. Uh, she played it with me because she loves me, but she will never play it with me again. She does not like it. She likes the cooperative. She likes the kind of games where Ticket to Ride where occasionally you might screw somebody over, but most of the time you're really just doing your own thing and somebody's going to win. She does not like this kind of game. However, those are the only cons I have for this game. And you might have noticed none of those cons are actually about the game itself because Twilight Struggle is fantastic. The mechanics are fantastic. The cards are fantastic. The components are outstanding. I love the board. I love the artwork. The, the little uh, cardboard pieces you get are great. They give you the little baggies. Everything is great. The theme, though, is really what sucked me in personally. I am by no means a Cold War buff. Uh, I like history, but after playing this game numerous times, I want to go back and learn more about the Cold War and watch Cold War movies because it really sucked me and I really felt like I was trying to crush my opponent and every single maneuver I was making could potentially cost me uh, the world. And that was something that I really, really loved. I also loved and the fact that the back of the rule booklet, they decided to make it so that they would show every single card and what happened for every card because that's one thing I loved about the theme for this game. Normally you're playing with orcs and goblins and zombies and what haves you and talking robots, who knows. But in this game, everything actually happened. All of the cards are based on tr are true events. That blows my mind. And uh, I really like the fact that they go into more detail about what each card means, uh, what it really happened. It's very cool. The last thing, and the thing that makes it number one on Board Game Geek, is... The strategy. This is not a game that you'll be planning what you're going to do this turn. This is a game where you're going to plan what you do this turn, and next turn, and next action, and mid-war, and late war, and space race, and what your opponent might do, and when he's going to play the China card, and oh, you'll say, oh, I don't have enough control in Central America, oh, I don't have enough control in Southeast Asia, and oh, when's the scoring card going to be coming up? You are going to have so many things to juggle, it will hurt your brain a little bit, but in a fantastic way. Twilight Struggle from GMT Games is a fantastic game that should be on your shelf. It is worth your time, it is worth your money, and it has earned its number one ranking on BoardGameGeek.com because it is just a fantastic game. Overall, Twilight Struggle should be on your shelf if you are looking for a two-player game with an incredibly deep amount of strategy. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Twilight Struggle. For more reviews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. And be sure to check out BoardGameExchange.com, the revolution in board gaming.